Hey there, Navy.5184 here, and welcome to my reaction to the next episode of Star Wars Acolyte. We are on episode six, Teach Corrupt. So let's get back to episode five real quick because that was a doozy. I would be lying if I said, actually, I think I might even say in that video, I, I expected all the, as I termed it, red shirt Jedi, which thankfully, uh, when I saw other people reacting to that episode, I wasn't the only one that thought that. So I actually kind of appreciate that, that I wasn't the only one that was thinking the red shirts from Star Trek uh, with that. But I fully expected all of them to die. But Yord and Jackie really got me as I think Yord probably got me the most in a little bit because I was just kind of starting to warm up to him a little bit. You know, because he, he he seems like one of those, or I should say seemed, you know, like one of those Jedi's that was really stiff and by the book. But at the same time, you kind of saw that there was some meat with him. You know, there was, he wasn't exactly cold per se. You know, he seemed a little stiff, but, you know, I was kind of warming up to him. And even with his interaction with Osha, you could tell that he cared about her. So... You know, he definitely had some great qualities about him. Jackie was quickly, I mean, Soul is probably still my favorite character in this series. Granted, after, I mean, Kamir uh, might even hop up on there because he's turning out to be more of an interesting character than even I initially thought. Like, I was even saying, even before I realized he was who he was, that it felt like he knew a little more about what was going on, and obviously he did. He was the one pulling the strings, really, but even so, it's just there's something very interesting about him. And one of the things that I kind of held on to for a little bit until I rewatched the episode was the idea of him being a Sith. And I'm actually thinking he's not a Sith. You know, I mean, obviously a lot of people just see red lightsaber and automatically think that, but you gotta remember, you know, I mean, you know, Inquisitors, they weren't Sith, but they had red lightsabers. You know, I forget how the whole thing works with the whole Kyber Crystal thing. You know, I've never really read really anything extra that really goes into it. So, but I kind of get the general gist of it, but you know, I, you just think about what he said and when you really dive into it, because he said, First off, he said he had no name. Name me a Sith that didn't have a name. Secondly, the way he worded it was, you know, he's like, a Jedi like you would call me Sith. So basically he's saying the Jedi might call him a Sith, but he doesn't, you know, which kind of goes to show. And amazingly enough, as I was watching the show, I was actually thinking about um, when I started doing my reaction to the Clone Wars on my other channel with that I'm actually merging into this one So all of my Clone War reactor are coming here, but um, on my other channel. I had a, a person. I don't remember his name I think he actually um, Might have commented on one of my videos of the Acolyte even I'd have to look him up But he was really talking about a lot, you know about the flaws of the Jedi where the Jedi were wrong and stuff, you know and me still being very pro Jedi really didn't fully agree with him in a lot of his stances but at the same time i can't really say there's any fault in his thinking and i almost feel like this show would be right up his alley because it almost feel like this show is proving every single point he's been trying to make to me and i think it's something i've been seeing is the whole fall of the jedi i mean obviously that seems to be the whole thing I have seen some people complaining about, you know, the idea of Jedi being the villains or everything, but if you really think about it, they've been going about that since the prequels, if you really look at it, you know, because how many times do you think, well, if the Jedi would have just handled Anakin a little different, or if they would have just let Qui-Gon train him, granted, it really wouldn't have mattered because Darth Maul, you know, really put a kebab on that one, but... Either which way, you know, people talk about the things the Jedi did wrong in terms of dealing with Anakin, you know. And then even, like I said, you know, this uh, one cat, you know, on my Clone Wars stuff. So the whole idea of the whole making the Jedi as a villain thing isn't exactly new, but I don't force really see the Jedi being villains in this. It's showing what happened to make it to where they basically lost their way. And that's kind of the whole thing. If you really look through even the original trilogy, 
how they were just so set on their ways, on their ways being right. And I think in the sequel trilogy is when they kind of realized that, you know, their ways may have been a little outdated. Even Yoda in The Last Jedi, when he was, you know, talking to Luke, you know, when Yoda himself destroyed, um, I don't know if there was a special name for it, but it's like that tree that Luke initially was going to set fire, but then he couldn't, you know, even Yoda was talking about the old Jedi texts just being old books, you know, not really an interesting read, but, you know, talking about how, you know, there's nothing in there that Rey would have needed for her training and everything. But I think that's just the whole point. They were just so stuck in their ways. It's like how much chaos could have been prevented if the Jedi weren't so rigid, like that coven with Osha and May, if the Jedi didn't come in there you know, basically saying, hey, it's illegal for you to try to teach children the ways of the Force, but we can, you know, think about the resentment that caused, you know, and even Kamir kind of hinted at that, you know, it's like the Jedi, it's like in terms of the Force, they almost made it like they were the only ones allowed to use it, even if other people were, you know, susceptible to it. And I and personally, I think the way the Jedi should handle stuff like that is, you know, if they don't want to become Jedi, fine, but they shouldn't be restricted, you know, from using the Force because the whole Force, you know, is technically supposed to be meant for everybody. And I think that's something that Luke was trying to um, impart on the Rey. But then the people that use it for their own gains, use it for their own power, which is something the Coven kind of hinted at, you know, that's when things kind of go bad. And that's maybe where the Jedi can kind of come and police it a little bit. Like, hey, you know, the, you know, the force isn't meant to be used to do your will, you know, type of deal, you know, and that's just the whole vibe I'm getting. And the one thing I'm really waiting on is for Soul to finally tell what in the world happened on Brendock? Now the question is, is it gonna happen now because May switched with Osha, so now she's with Sol, and I'm assuming that Kamir is taking Osha, so that's gonna be an interesting dynamic to see what happens with this episode. And I really wanna know what in the world happens when the council figures out what happened. And that in itself just seems like a whole thing because again, it's like you're just seeing how political the Jedi really seem to really be now that, you know, that they're, they're losing so much sight and everything. So maybe that's where episode six will take us. We shall see. I am totally ready to see where this story goes. So let's go ahead and get started with episode six. Teach Corrupt. Hey there, thanks for stopping by and I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel, feel free to check the description for various ways to do so. Some which will include an affiliate link to Dubby, uh, which you use, you get a 10% off your order. And also a link to my merch store, which is constantly running promotions and deals, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which you can get exclusive perks and content. Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again and I will catch y'all down the road. All right, so we are starting off with Osha, who is clearly in Kamir's hideout. All right, so he's definitely healed up her wound. Probably just trying to get on her good side. Probably going to try to make her turn, I would imagine. Osha, you saw what this guy can do. You're not going to do anything with a knife. Wait a minute. That's not where I think it is, is it? No, that can't be. My whole team is dead. He is not handling it well. Then again, who would? Deal with something you haven't dealt with in almost a millennia. I'm going to reset the transceiver. Take the wheel. <clears throat> <sighs> 
Yeah, it's rough to see. That poor dude. Oh, he is wrecked. He is wrecked. I'll say this. As much as I think he knows that that's, o that's May and not Osha, if he didn't realize it, I don't think anyone could really blame him. I mean, on top of everything he was already going through internally, then to have to deal with this extra, this dude is wrecked right now. I refuse to believe that he doesn't sense Osha following him. Ooh. Ooh, what happened to him? Well, I mean, I guess after a intense battle, you know, one must bathe themselves. How does it feel? There it is. To hold one in your hand again. If you're not going to join me, I'd like to put my clothes back on. I'm wondering if it's honorable to kill me like this. Heat of battle is justified. But a few hours later, it's vengeance. Your anger betrays your thoughts. There it is. A special relationship, isn't it? Master and people. I'm curious more than ever what his end game is now. He could easily disarm her and do whatever he wants to her, but A, he's letting her keep hold of the saber, and he's just walking back to the hideout. That man, he corrupted your sister. He pushed me to a place I... Yeah, he definitely pushed you, that's for sure. It's time for me to face the High Council. To tell them everything. So are they going back to Coruscant? Now what? Do you want to take a look? Give me a couple minutes. Oh! Because he thinks that's Osha so she can fix whatever's going on with the ship. What is it, Mark? We received a distress call from Master Soul. Apparently he's on a mission in the Outer Rim. What did he say? There were casualties. Who? EVERYONE! Prepare a rescue team to depart for the planet Kofar immediately. H how do you know where he is? I sent him there. Okay. I have a feeling this is not going to be good for Sol. I've never heard of you. It was a really long time ago. So he was a Jedi at one point. If you keep me here, Sol comes to you. He's found me before. That's your strength in the Force, Osha. Yeah, you have no idea what you're doing. Oh, she's gonna try to use Pip. Oh, Basil! <laughs> what is he doing? Hey, <laughs> hey, relax, relax, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, relax, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> what if I reset you to factory settings? Hmm? Oh, no. No. I'm getting tired of these cute little droids getting reset or switch, whatever you want to call it. But I remember when they did that to Lola on Obi-Wan. The Jedi teach there's only one way to access the Force. And if you don't do it their way, it fades. But there is another way. Anger, fear, loss, desire. That's the path to the dark side. Took the words right out of my mouth. You murdered my friends. You killed Yord. A man who didn't hesitate to turn you in for a crime you didn't commit. You killed Jackie. And where did you think that was going to go? To be fair on the yard point, everybody thought it was her. No one knew May was still alive. I'm not my sister. I'm not that easily corrupted. 
Oh, why do I have a feeling that those words are going to come back to bite her really hard? Kamir knows how to get in your head. Turn it on. A Jedi doesn't attack the unarmed. Why do you still think of yourself as a Jedi? They didn't want you. It's not true. Then why aren't you a Jedi? Why aren't you a Jedi, Osha? Because I failed! What, Osha? Osha? Retract? I lost everything. But when you lose everything, that's when you're finally free. I hate the fact that out of everything he's saying, as twisted as it may be, makes sense. It's like everything he's saying, it's like, can you really fully argue against it? But it's what he does with it that makes it wrong. Are you joining us on the mission, Master? I am. That's unsettling. You get nauseous when you travel through hyperspace? I don't get sick. I find it unsettling. <laughs> I do appreciate they're adding some humor in that. I kind of need that after an episode like last episode. But speaking of uh, unsettling, though, it does feel unsettling that Vanestra is going on this. Like, I feel cover-up all over this. What is it? Dude, he is. Mm. How could I not have sensed that villain's true intentions when we first met him on Olega? I think you're just too short-sighted on that mission. He fooled us all. I had to lose a lot of myself in order to become a Jedi. I'm sorry if you felt that way. How could I feel any other way? Come on, so you gotta sense something. That's not something Osha would say. Everything that happened on Bren Talk. You are very young. But I'm not now. You can tell me. The one time where I actually don't want to ship the power up. Because it looked like he was actually about to t say what went on. Identify yourself. My name is... What the... Did he know? Oh, Basil. Basil must have hinted something. The rescue team is on their way. Leave your transponder on... Wow! Wow! Talk about timing. Seems an umber moth colony hatched last night and wreaked havoc on the local settlement. Could explain the large amount of casualties. It could. She knows better. She knows something. Wait a minute. This just hit me. How does she know where to go? The other team needed Basil. How does she know which way to go? Did you give the same pitch to my sister? I thought she wanted what I want. What do you want? The power of two. Where'd you get that scar? How do you think I got it? Your Jedi Master? Kurtosis. Any against lightsabers, but also a sensory deprivation headpiece, like we used as young legs. I actually learned about that after the last episode, which explains what, why uh, it did what it did to the lightsabers anytime it made contact. Oh, did y'all, re did you really? Oh, I can see the stab wounds. Why? Ugh. We didn't need to be reminded of oh, poor Yord. What do you see? One versus many. His power extraordinary, his skills erratic. His sole aim was to leave no survivors. Whoa! Uh lightsaber, what wait a minute. You don't think Master Soul was responsible. Oh, you are not about to pin this on Soul. Accusation. Okay, it doesn't sound like she she's going to, the but... Power to slay such a strong group. I think she knows. 
But if he did this, why would he send us a distress signal? It's time he to get didn't. Back to the ship. We should prepare these bodies for burial. I'm willing to bet money that Scott and Kamir's back was from her. A curved wound, a lightsaber whip. I have no intention of harming you, May. We have a lot to do. I've had 16 years to think about what I would say to you if I ever got the opportunity. So you're going to listen. Dude. Oh, you better not, you. No, not right there. Not right. Okay. Good. Still got some time. <laughs> oh boy. I, I, I was about to get a little upset. Oh, shut. No, boy. Well, if that isn't insanely symbolic. Oof. All right, that was Star Wars Acolyte Episode 6, Teach It Corrupt, and I was talking about how I was about to be mad if the show went to the credits after Soul forcefully told me she was going to listen. But after seeing what I just saw, now nah, I wish they did. Oh boy. I have a feeling we're about to see a double turn on the levels of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13. Oh boy. I'm be see, now here's the thing. I I feel like there's a part of me that wishes that this was more than eight episodes. I feel like this should be ten episodes because there is a it feels like there is a lot of crap to answer for in just two episodes to come to a, I guess you say, fully satisfying conclusion. Granted, I kind of thought the same thing with Ahsoka, but I think they did it in a way to where, you know, it kind of worked, but at the same time, it did feel a little rushed, and I feel like that's the same thing that's going here. You know, it's, you know, I don't think the pace is really bad. I think it's kind of rough for just an eight episode season. I think if they added two more episodes, everything would feel like it'd be flowing. I'm uh, really afraid that the next uh, next two episodes are gonna feel really rushed because, I mean, look at everything we got like right in the last few minutes of this episode. So we already saw the scar on Kamir's back. And then you see Vanessa with a lightsaber whip, which is telling me that she was the one that gave the scar to Kamir, which makes me wonder, was he her pupil? And whatever, I know he said the Jedi threw him away or whatever. There's obviously a lot of story to go with that. Um, you know, obviously we still need to know what really happened on Brendock because we know that from what we saw in episode three is not the full story, you know. But then the thing is, was Kamir involved with it somehow? Uh, what did the council know? What were they told? Well, they were probably told what we saw in episode 3, but what really happened? And knowing what happened on Kofar, you know, I mean, I, I smell cover-up all over the place, but in what sense? And then the other thing that you got to think about is, how does this end in a way to where, um, again, I don't remember his name, but, you know, the... Jedi in um, Phantom Menace talking about how the Sith have been extinct for a millennia. Again, that smells like cover up, but what if Kamir dies? Or, you know, obviously I feel like Soul's gotta die. But, like, basically everybody that's out right now, I feel like there's gonna be no survivors. 
And if that's the case, then it's going to be a severe cover up. But then again, what if there's somebody on the council that's in on this, you know, kind of like on a Palpatine level where they're there, you know, and they they're technically playing both sides in a way. I don't know. There's a lot of questions that I just don't know if they can fully answer in a fully satisfactory way in just two episodes but then again i have no idea how long the episodes might be they might be longer like i noticed this one was longer than uh it felt like than the last couple episodes so uh jeez you know and then what is osha seeing when she put on the helmet what how is may gonna react to soul you know saying everything that happened because what I'm curious about is what is May's memory of the events? Like, how does she remember everything? You know, what she lied to. And Kamir is really proven to be a very, I'm, I'm loving the way I don't fully remember how to pronounce his last name, but uh, Manny Juancito, I think. Dude, he is killing that role. He quickly. I mean, he is just so impressive. I mean, for four episodes, he felt like he was kind of like a bumbling sidekick. But then the way he just flipped the switch to a point where it's just like, you really don't want to mess with this dude. And the way he speaks like so calm and it's just like, I'm not going to put him on the level of Grand Admiral Thrawn in terms of villains, but I'm only using Thrawn as an example because one of the things that made me very uneasy about Thrawn is how cool, collected, and like intellectual he was. And I get a very similar sense with Kamir where his strength isn't necessarily, you know, he can go off and just, you know, slay, you know, like a Jedi with no issue. It's how he gets in your head. It's how, like I was saying, it's like the thing I hate is the fact that there's nothing that he said that I can't really fully argue against. Where things get twisted is what he does with that info. Do I agree with him that the Jedi probably should not have been the type where it's just like, hey, we're the only ones that allowed you to use the force? Full heartedly. But what Kamir has done is, you know, really twisted. You know, maybe if he had been allowed to use, I don't want to say use the force the way he wanted, but, you know, it's just like, I agree with him to a sense. I don't think the Jedi should be the only ones allowed to use the force. I mean, they can be, you know, they can police it. You know, obviously if people are, you know, abusing it, then okay, step in. But, you know... I'm sure there there are people out there who are force sensitive, can use the force, who can be responsible with it. You know, it shouldn't just be only Jedi. You know, oh geez, it just feels like there's so much to get into. And again, I just don't know how we can do it in two episodes. But I'm a patient type. I will wait and see how they do it. Because maybe they do it in a way to where maybe it's not completely rushed and, you know, we do get all the answers when it's appropriate. I am just more curious to see how this ends. Because I just have an uneasy feeling about, I mean, really everything, especially Vanestra. She's, there's got to be something she's hiding. You know, I don't see any other reason that she would take such a vested interest in going on this particular mission outside of the fact that, you know, maybe maybe it is solely just politically charged. I don't feel like that's it. I feel like that that's a part of it, but I really feel like that there's something that she knows that we're going to find out and it's not going to be a happy discovery. And again, I'm definitely curious to see about my theory because I'm willing to bet that she had something to do with Kamira getting that scar, but but another thing is Osha talking about how she failed and that's why she's not a Jedi. I would like some more explanation on that as well. Maybe we'll get that. Maybe that's something she'll see, but I don't know. I feel like Kamir is doing something that he, it's going to twist her brain to where I don't know if she's going to get exactly on May level, but oh boy. Oh boy. I will say this though. I know like for the first three episodes, I wouldn't say I had a very high opinion of the show. It's like the, the episodes themselves I enjoyed. They were okay. They're fun to watch. 
But then when I looked at it as a whole, it's just kind of like you wonder where it's going. But then after we now we're up to six and it's like now all the pieces feel like they're starting to come together and everything's kind of like, OK, because like I said, you know, when I started piecing what Kamir knew about Torben and everything like that, um, I think I even saw somebody on another video comment about how he was able to kind of overpower May in the alley in Olega. And it's like, that's actually kind of a good point. That's something I didn't even think about, you know, in terms of hints about him being the master. You know, it's one, this is one of those shows I feel like that it's hard to watch week by week, but if you're to just kind of like binge it, it would all flow together a lot better. But instead, we're kind of left on all these cliffhangers waiting a week. It's like, now what's going on, you know? And then on top of that, it's like, like I got all these questions right now, but then how many more questions are going to be raised? You know, now that I've done, you know, my own reaction to it, you know, I like to rewatch the episode and then also see other people's reactions because a lot of people catch a lot of stuff that I missed. And then that then raises more questions. Like that's how I learned about uh, the cortosis and what that was. And it's actually, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I actually felt really good seeing that I wasn't the only reactor that did not know what cortosis was. So that makes me feel really good about myself. But, you know, but seeing you know just getting answers like that you know and then just kind of like little just little things here and there you know i think cortosis was like the main thing i probably missed but you know i was thinking that soul kind of thought that you know may was really may and not osha because when she first saw him you know he was like where is she your sister he didn't say a name you know so i thought he suspected but then you know at the beginning of this episode you know, he kept calling her Osha, kept asking her to do things that Osha would do. You know, so I'm guessing maybe he didn't. But at the same time, who can blame him? I mean, that poor guy is wrecked. And now, finally, after six episodes, he might finally have a chance to get rid of some of that guilt. Which kind of makes you feel like he's going to have, um, I'm going to call it an Ahsoka White moment. Where, you know, when Ahsoka, in, in her series, after she had her thing with Anakin in their episode 5 where after she finally came to terms with who she was and her destiny and realized that just because she was trained by the person who would become Darth Vader doesn't mean she's going to become him. You know, once she finally got that through her head, you know, then she could really, like I felt like that really brought her back in tune with the force. And I feel like that it's gonna be kind of something similar with Soul where once he finally tells, especially telling it to May to come clean with about what happened and maybe how he felt about everything. It's clear that he cares about May just as much as he does about Osha. Obviously, well, I would say Osha probably a little more since he did train her, but you know, it's not like May was just chopped liver to him. He cared about her too. So to be able to make things right with her is probably going to give him some measure of peace. But now what's going to happen between him and Osha? You know, I mean, it, like I said, it honestly feels like we're about to have a Bret Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin type double turn here with Osha and May, where, which actually, if you kind of think about it, it's kind of symbolized all over the place, you know, with Osha being in all black and you got May, you know, in the civilian garb, you know, which is, you know, light. So in a way, it's already hinted that that's going to happen. But then what happens with it when it does, you know, do they even survive this ordeal or is there something really going on special with them? I don't know. There's a lot of questions I hope get answered soon, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that because like I said, I'm going to go watch some other people react to this and rewatch the episode and see why I may have missed on initial a reaction but i will say that despite this definitely being a way slower episode i think this was a needed episode and i actually did kind of enjoy it i did like the little bits of humor they tried adding in there like i said definitely needed after the seriousness of last episode but you know it's one of those things where it's like yeah it was definitely a slower episode but i feel like a very important episode because like I said, we got a little bit more backstory on Kamir, learning that he was a prior Jedi, that he was, according to his words, thrown out of the Order. And, you know, seeing what's going on with Osha, with Mei, Soul, and everything. 
like I said, just so many things, you know, kind of starting to come together, but at the same time, more questions raised. So, like I said, slow but important episode. So, I will go ahead and leave it at that. And thank you guys for stopping by and watching this. Hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, definitely make sure you check out my other Acolyte reactions right there. And feel free to check out even some of my other Star Wars reactions. And I will catch you all down the road.